This is the third video on constipation and we'll discuss treatment. Let's now discuss how to prevent chronic constipation. Firstly, ensure adequate fluid intake. Ensure that one drinks at least 2 liters of fluids per day. Too much of caffeine, alcohol and fizzy drinks may cause dehydration and worsen the constipation. Next is bowel habits. Try to open bowels at a fixed time every day, especially after meals, because eating helps the colon to move the stools. Trying to have a bowel movement the first thing in the morning or 15 to 45 minutes after breakfast might help. Also, don't ignore the urge to poop. It is not necessary to open your bowels every day, so don't be obsessed by it. In the toilet, try resting your feet on a low stool so that your knees are above your hips. This can make passing stools easier. Stay as active as possible. Physical activity increases the muscle activity of the intestines. Try to manage stress as stress may worsen constipation. Drinking caffeine containing drinks like coffee in the mornings may help because it stimulates the colon, but too much of coffee may be a problem because it can cause dehydration and could worsen the constipation. Eat less processed food, meat and dairy products. Milk may cause constipation because it contains calcium. Ensure that you take adequate fiber. The recommended fiber intake per day is between 25 to 30 grams. You should start on a low dose of fiber and increase it every 1 to 2 weeks until the desired effect is achieved or troublesome flatulence occurs. Fiber doesn't work overnight and may take a few weeks to reach the desired effect. A fiber-rich diet includes beans, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and cereals. Too much of fiber could cause abdomen bloating and flatulence. Prunes are a rich source of fiber because of the high content of sorbitol. Prunes are better than prune juice. Let's now discuss about laxatives. As mentioned earlier, laxatives are substances that loosen stools and increase bowel movements. This table shows you the five types of laxatives that are used to treat constipation. Let's go through one by one. Bulk forming laxatives. If you are unable to take adequate dietary fiber, then the next choice would be bulk forming laxatives. This prevents constipation by increasing the size of stools. The bigger or bulkier the stools, the faster it is for the stools to move through the intestines. Examples of bulk forming laxatives are psyllium and methyl cellulose. It normally takes about 12 to 24 hours for some effect, but the full effect is usually felt a bit later, 48 to 72 hours. The second type of laxative is osmotic laxatives. This laxative works by drawing fluid from the intestine and also softens the stools. This makes it easier to pass the stools. There are essentially three types of osmotic laxatives. One is saline laxatives like magnesium hydroxide or milk of magnesia which has been there for a long time. Saline laxatives are actually salts. They help to draw water into the colon. They work rapidly within about 30 minutes to 3 hours. The second type of laxatives are called polymer laxatives. These laxatives consist of large molecules that cause stools to retain water. It usually takes about 6 hours or longer for the polymer laxatives to work. An example of this is polyethylene glycol or macrogol. And examples of Folex and Miralex. Polymer laxatives 
are sometimes preferred because they do not cause bloating or gas. The third type of osmotic laxative is lactulose. They are sugar-like agents that work similarly to saline laxatives but at a much slower rate and are sometimes used to treat chronic constipation. It normally takes about 2-3 to three days for it to work. Lactulose can cause gas and bloating unlike the polymer laxatives. Both the polymer and lactulose can be given for chronic constipation, whereas the saline laxative is given more for acute constipation. The third group of laxatives are called stimulant laxatives. They work by increasing intestine muscle movement. The effects of these laxatives are felt a lot faster and they usually work within 6 to 12 hours. However, the downside is that they can sometimes cause severe diarrhea, loss of salt and abdominal pain. Examples are Bisacodyl or Dalcolex, Senna in Senacot, and Sodium Picosulfate or Picolex. The fourth type of laxatives are called stool softeners. They soften stools by drawing water in. They take about 12 to 72 hours to work. An example of that is Jotucid Sodium or Colase. Finally, we have the lubricant laxatives. They work fairly quickly within 6 to 8 hours. An example of that is mineral oil or liquid paraffin. So these are the five major groups of laxatives. Enema are used for severe constipation when the above laxatives do not work. Enemas are inserted into the rectum by the nurse or doctor. A liquid is then squirted into the rectum. Enemas can be water alone or the laxative is added to the water. Enemas work by distending the rectum and stimulating the colon to contract, so eliminating the waste material. Suppositories are gel-like materials that are inserted into the rectum, which contain a laxative. This table shows the different types of enemas and suppositories that are available, including the content and the mechanism of action. Now let's talk about medications that are used for irritable bowel syndrome, constipation type, chronic idiopathic constipation, and constipation due to the use of opiates. As I mentioned in the first video, both irritable bowel syndrome and chronic idiopathic constipation are among the commonest cause of chronic constipation. There are several drugs that can be used for this condition. Let's first start off with this drug, brucalopride which can be used for broad irritable bowel as well as chronic idiopathic constipation. It is believed to stimulate the intestines and is safe to be used even in older people. Then there are two other drugs here, lubiprostol and linaclotide. These medications work by increasing the amount of chloride that is secreted into the gut, which increases the amount of fluid in the gut, which in turn stimulates bowel movements. They are approved for the use for irritable bowel syndrome but only in women above the age of 18 and for chronic idiopathic constipation. Linaclotide is for both irritable bowel as well as chronic idiopathic constipation. Placanatide is approved for both irritable bowel syndrome, constipation type and chronic idiopathic constipation. So there are four drugs they help to relieve the symptoms in a large number of patients. Some of these drugs are only available in a few countries. Then we have this newer drug called Naloxigol or Movantic and it is used for constipation that is caused by opiate pain medications like codeine or morphine or other drugs that belong to the category. How about probiotics? Some studies have shown that probiotics may help in some types of constipation, but more research is needed. One needs to take probiotics for at least a month to see whether it works. Biofeedback therapy is treatment of choice for dyssynergic defecation. 
about two-thirds of patients with this synergic defecation improve with biofeedback therapy. Biofeedback therapy is to assist the patient in learning how to relax and tighten the muscles of the pelvic floor. Biofeedback is a method by which people can learn to control bodily processes that were previously believed to be involuntary or out of their control. Let's summarize the medications that are used for chronic constipation. This is a flowchart for the management of constipation. One can first try to start with a bulk laxative like psyllium. If that doesn't work, then go to a osmotic laxative like lactulose or a polymer laxative. If that doesn't work, next one can try a stimulant laxative like bisacodyl or senna. Sometimes the stimulant laxatives may cause diarrhea and stomach cramps. If that doesn't work and the constipation is severe, the next step is to try enemas or suppository. For the management of irritable bowel syndrome, the constipation type, and chronic idiopathic constipation, there are specific medications which I have discussed earlier. Finally, treatment for this synergic defecation is biofeedback therapy.